Now, one of the simplest ways for a video game to prolong a boss fight is to divide the battle into a series of phases, such that when the player thinks that they've just triumphed over these big bads, they find out that there's another one, two, or three, or more sections to go. Now, this can be a wonderfully pleasant surprise when it's done well, Sekiro's Guardian 8 being a classic recent example, because it gives players a second and maybe even third chance to beat the living hell out of a thoroughly deserving boss. But on the other hand, multi-phase boss fights can be emblematic of lazy, cheap games design where the developers couldn't really conceive of a smarter way to challenge the player beyond forcing them into a brutal endurance trial. Now, the bosses that I'm going to be covering here today aren't terrible by any stretch of the imagination. They're all fun to some degree, but were definitely made a lot worse by having multi-stage boss fights that really just aggravated players. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 worst multi-phase video game boss battles. Number 10. King K. Rule, Donkey Kong 64 King K. Rule is Donkey Kong 64's final boss, but rather than simply have Donkey Kong go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in a boxing ring, players have to take part in a five-phase boss battle where each of the playable Kongs must beat him in turn. Though each of the phases changes up the gameplay a little, some majorly frustrating constraints are enforced upon the player, namely a tight two-and-a-half-minute time limit per round. If you can't drain K. Rule's health in that time, the round will restart with his health restored or while the player's isn't. Worse still, you've only got 12 12 rounds to complete the five phases with zero checkpoints. If you fail or any of your Kongs loses all of their health, then you'll have to start the entire boss fight again. Considering that even a good run through the battle can take close to 20 minutes, it can take hours to beat this thing, especially as the final phase ratchets up the difficulty considerably. Number 9. Sean Sifu Sifu has become the game on everybody's lips as of late. Though even skilled beat-em-up players have found themselves stumped in droves at the end of the game's grueling second level, The Club, the end-level boss is the fighter known as Sean, who more than lives up to the promise of his moniker. Just getting to him is itself no picnic, and all but the most committed players will rack up at least a few debilitating deaths on the way, per the game's mechanic that ages players every time they die. But even if you think you're actually faring well against Sean and his tricky attacks, don't start celebrating prematurely. Whistler's health bar down to zero and a brief cutscene will play after which Sean will return for phase two. Though Sean isn't a ton harder this time, there's a fair chance that you're hanging on by a thread age-wise by this point, having slogged your way through phase one and now are dangerously close to a game over. As a result, Sean serves as a major brick wall for many players, who typically have to fight their way through the club while incurring as little damage as possible before throwing down with him. But don't worry, things do get a lot easier later on, when you can unlock some shortcuts and get to him very quick. Personally, I managed to do this without dying once, so take that, you stupid prick, Sean. Number 8. Boost Guardian Metroid Prime 2 Echoes Few video games have difficulty spikes as aggravating as Metroid Prime 2, which throws a sub-boss at the player considerably more punishing than basically any of the game's real bosses. Thankfully, this was toned down for the Wii re-release. We're talking, of course, about the infamous Boost Guardian, which offers up two phases, a more typical monstrous form and a boost ball form. The latter is especially tricky as it will boost around the arena and deal enormous damage if you're unlucky enough to be hit. It can be enormous enormously frustrating to make it through the first phase of the Boost Guardian's attacks, only to be made short work of once it enters Boost Ball form, especially considering how enclosed the arena is and how difficult it is to pick up any extra health. Legend dictates that the developer's retro studio simply didn't have enough time to playtest this fight during the game's rushed production, and you know what? That's very easy to believe. Number 7. Reflux – Rayman 3 – Hoodlum Havoc Though Rayman 3's difficulty is generally pretty manageable, that all goes out of the bloody window for the final boss battle against Reflux, which forces the player through an excruciating four-phase boss fight. Oof. Each of the four phases requires players to use a different power in their skill set, while also demonstrating absolute mastery of Rayman's traversal abilities. If you let him, Reflux can easily make short work of you in any of these phases, which of course will send you right back to the beginning of the whole fight. To make matters worse, the run-up to the boss fight from the last checkpoint is a annoyingly long, and this being a game originally released in 2003 means of course you're forced to sit through the cutscenes between phases during every single attempt. It all adds up to a fight that's not simply difficult but also deeply irritating. The sense of accomplishment at finally beating this was undeniable, if at all you did, but it was a textbook example of how to deliver an intensely annoying multi-phase boss fight. Number 6. Kefka 
Final Fantasy VI. Now, to be totally fair, there are a lot of people who absolutely love Final Fantasy VI's climactic boss fight against Kefka and will therefore defend this to their dying breath. And though the battle is undeniably epic, it can also be an overpowering exercise in frustration, given that players need to best Kefka through four separate phases before the fight is over. And the deck is stacked against you right away, as Kefka will always cast Heartless Angel on his first turn, which immediately reduces every party member down to 1 HP. Kefka will then continue to throw hellacious attacks at the player throughout each of his phases, which can effortlessly KO your entire team. Though Kefka is by no means the hardest Final Fantasy and boss, the sheer abundance of phases, the length of the fight, and the speed with which it can all go horribly wrong for players can make for a real pain. Number 5. Vati – The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap the Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap wraps up with an absolutely infuriating three-phase final boss fight against Varty. The frustration sets in before the battle even begins, though, as you're first forced to get through a series of time challenges and also through a tough trio of dark nuts. The final boss himself consists of three phases, each more grotesque than the one before, and each requiring split-second reflexes from the player to evade his attacks. One of the major annoyances is that each phase also contains dialogue between it, meaning that any repeated attempts to beat him, and trust me, you will have many quickly become aggravating. Without any checkpoints to speak of and having to slog your way back through the brutal prelude up to the fight itself, the final boss is an exercise in how to engineer a multi-phase boss fight for maximum player frustration, while also showing a frankly maddening lack of respect for their personal time. Number 4. Blueprint Brain Tank – Psychonauts Psychonauts' second boss fight can go all the way to hell. The blueprint brain tank may seem like a simple enough encounter at first, I mean, use the environment to protect yourself from the tank's attacks and take pot shots whenever you're able, except once you've whittled the tank's health down to zilch by attacking its soft, gelatinous underbelly, it explodes and the brain controlling the tank immediately emerges for a surprise second phase. This round is considerably tougher than the first, as the brain deploys a sweeping laser which can deal massive damage if you're not paying attention. Yet players may have expended most of their resources getting through phase one, understandably believing that it was the only phase, and so having to battle the brain itself with only a sliver of mental health remaining is a tough challenge indeed. Were that second phase not so devilishly tricky, then this wouldn't be quite so aggravating, but coming as early as it does in the game, it is a real pain in the ass. Number 3. Galdera – Octopath Traveler Octopath Traveler's true final boss, Galdera, is basically an exercise in chastising the player and making them question the life choices that brought them to this bloody point. Before you even take on this big bad, you have to power through a boss gauntlet, whereby you're tasked with fighting and defeating each of the eight bosses from every main character's story. You're unable to save at any point during the gauntlet, which can take close to an hour depending on your skill, so if you fall to any of these bosses, you're gonna have to start the whole bloody thing again. As for the final boss fight himself, well, the fight takes place in two phases with your party split into two teams of four. As such, you basically need to be an expert in each of the game's eight classes before even considering this fight because he can and will quickly wipe your squad if you're not careful. It is admittedly supposed to be the be-all, end-all challenge for committed players, but even so, having to restart the entire gauntlet upon dying is not fun in the slightest. It is a damn torturous slog. Number 2. Sister Frida – Dark Souls 3 Though there are certainly many, many Dark Souls fans who will defend the Sister Frida fight to the ends of the earth, it is a textbook example of a multi-phase boss battle that is sure to have players ready to hurl their bloody controllers out of the nearest window. Window. She appears in the Dark Souls 3 DLC Ashes of Ariandel, and is generally accepted to be one of the series' more challenging bosses, yet this is less because the fight is meticulously engineered to push players to their brink, and more that it forces them to endure through three punishing phases that just come out of nowhere. Players fight Frida alone in the first round, before then also taking on Father Ariandel in the second, such that by the time you reach the third phase against Frida solo again, you're unlikely to have much left in the tank. Given her intimidating speed and power, having to whittle three separate life bars down without any sort of checkpoint makes for a supremely stressful time, and not really in a good way. It's less emblematic of From Software's signature tough but fair design, and more that the developers are basically laughing at players. Two phases would have been tolerable, but three? That's a joke. And number one, Nick's Avatar, Persona 3. And finally we come to Persona 3's Nick's Avatar, a final boss fight that basically serves as a parody of multi-phase boss battles. Nick's Avatar has 14, yes, 
14 phases in total, taking the form of many different arcanas throughout the fight, and as such, it can take well over an hour for players to complete. To make matters worse, the fight has no checkpoints whatsoever, and in its final phase, the boss's Night Queen skill may cast charm on a party member, which will almost certainly result in them fully healing the boss, effectively negating the progress you've just made. Oh, and during the final phase, the boss will also use Moonless Gown, which reflects the player's attacks back at them. So let's just call Nick's avatar what it is, a bull boss intended to break the player's spirit with its egregiously overlong length and late stage introduction of grueling RNG elements. You'll be practically euphoric if you beat this thing, but if we're being honest, you'll likely have given up way before that point. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 of the worst multi-phase video game boss battles. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friends, because you deserve all of the best things in life, like love, happiness and success. And I want you to go out there with love in your hearts and try and live a healthy and happy life because that's all I want for you at the end of the day. You're a massive ledge, all right? Now go out there and smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.